All right, Yemi, since graduating from the University of Denver, tell people what you've been up to. Uh, since I graduated, uh, I do, I've been doing a lot of stuff. I went to uh, Sarasota, Florida, did some working out there, went to pre-draft in Florida, I went to Portsmouth in Virginia. I did all, I did maybe like 25 workouts with different uh, NBA teams, so uh, every other day I was in a new city. And then uh, went to Vegas for Summer League with the Sacramento Kings. And then I went to Belgium for my first uh, pro season. And then I went to Spain. And then I went to Puerto Rico. And then I went to, um, I went to uh, Germany. And I think that's it. Jeez. Yeah, there, needless to say, what you just listed there, there are so many opportunities to play professional basketball other than the NBA. What's the international game like? Is it a huge difference? Is it just basketball? Um, it's a big difference. Um, there's not as many athletes, you know, like uh, in the NBA, everybody's doing like 360 tomahawk type things. There's people that could do that in, 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 in the international league as well, but not as much. It's more of a, uh, a skill type game or uh, not so many superstars, you know, like each team, they mold all five players, you know, they all have specific roles. Like you're not going to have one guy on the team, like a Kobe Bryant, who's just going to score 30 points every game. You know, like those teams won't win. You know, they need even scoring and they need certain things. It's kind of like a college game, you know, like we run plays and these, these plays have certain, certain uh, goals. And so it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more of a team game rather than the NBA is more like one-on-one. -on -one. You know, everybody can beat their guy and get to the basket. Mm -hmm. it, playing overseas, I think there's two schools of thought. We've seen guys go over there and literally run back home in four or five days getting homesick. Other guys really seem to enjoy it. Where do you kind of check in here? It's definitely tough, you know, being away in a, another country uh, by yourself, you know, uh, no family, uh, the language, the food. I mean, it's so many little things that come, go into it uh, that you don't even think about until you get over there. But yeah, that's, that's pro probably the hardest part, just being away from friends and family for so long. You know, it's a 10 month, 10 month contract, so it's, it's a long time. Yeah, there are so many things that you could do when you graduate, and when you graduated, the NBA was a distinct possibility, and that is such a difficult nut to crack. Is the NBA still a goal for you, or do you think you kind of found your niche? Or I mean, uh, where do well, you stand? No, definitely, I'm not satisfied. You know, I'm still hungry. I wanna, I wanna make it to the NBA. Uh, still working out with teams or uh, trying to be found. Um, but as as of right now, you know, I'm still just trying to polish my game and uh, just get get better while I'm over there um, overseas because the the competition is great. Um, and I, um, I can definitely say I'm getting better over there. How often do you come back home? And you mentioned it's a 10-month contract. When that thing's up, are you back here as quick as you can get here? Yeah, definitely. Back here as quick as possible. But usually after that 10th that month, you know, the team keeps you out there for a couple more weeks. So you're just so antsy. You just can't wait to get back home. But the, usually we get like a five, six-day Christmas. And then a lot of players go home for a while. But... Uh, I, I stayed out there every, every Christmas and just went to different countries and visited different cities, did a little, uh, little traveling during my Christmas breaks. Nice. So I don't come home till May or June. Yeah. And it, needless to say, over the summer, we'll be walking around the building. We'll see you in the gym once in a while playing. When you walk back into Magnus Arena, what triggers in your mind? It, good memories? I mean, do you think about certain games or just the people? Or Oh, yeah, definitely. I, th I think of certain games off the top. Like, I could just... Walk in there, remember games, um, thinking about the people that were in the stands, or just all kinds of just old memories of uh, being here and winning and having so much fun. And yeah, like it's a good feeling coming back uh, into Magnus. Well, needless to say, Denver's been Division One now for 10 plus seasons, and without question, the most successful. Uh, time period was when you were here with Eric Benzel and Rodney Billups, and you, know, you run down that whole roster. You, you got to be pretty proud that I mean it's an 11 year existence of Division One since returning, but the best years were were with you. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it definitely feels like an accomplishment. I mean, a lot of work, a lot of hard work went into it. Not only from me, but from every single player on the team, even from the players that played maybe two, three minutes a game. You know, everybody. I mean, the, everybody was were friends. You know, we were so close, and we just enjoyed playing together, and it was fun to go out and just beat a team really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
maintaining friendships is maybe one of the most difficult things you can do you know after you get out of college and you get into the job market people start to move various places how close are you with some of your former teammates i'm still close with with a lot of them i mean now that there's facebook myspace twitter all that kind of stuff it's it's real easy to uh stay in contact and um it's like while i'm over overseas it's like it's real easy to call back over back to the states it's not so hard where you know I'm just out of reach you know I just can't talk to people anymore so it has been hard to keep in touch with people because while I was here these were the best friends I made. I think when a player plays they want to play and they want to keep playing and everything else is kind of secondary but I know when you graduated from this place and I think we should point out you did graduate but when you graduated from this place how proud your mom and dad were your mom said you know what if basketball takes him somewhere that's great but he's got that degree did that register when you graduated or maybe a little more now the time has passed do you realize the importance of that well I definitely realized the importance of it while I was here my parents I mean they drilled it in my head it's so tough every day like you're gonna play basketball, but we want you to do well in school, like school's first. And um, I mean, not, not so many years have gone by since I've been here, but I can definitely uh, see the value that my, uh, that my degree will do for me after basketball, because I've been playing with a lot of players now that haven't even finished school, and, and it shows in their, in their character. So um, I know I'm very uh, blessed and lucky to, uh, to uh, come here and finish, and yeah. Well, what's the immediate future now for Yemi Nicholson? What's what's going to happen this week, for example? What's next for you? This week, I might get a call today or tomorrow telling me to leave the next day. So uh, I'm just getting prepared uh, to go back over to Europe here in the ne next few days or weeks uh, to come. So, um, yeah, that's about it now. When basketball's over, and that's going to be a while, it appears, what do you want to do when the basketball career's in the books? Um, well, I'd like to start a business, maybe. Uh, I mean... I, I hope it's. I hope my basketball days will last for a little bit longer. But uh, I mean, I've had some ideas of you know starting a business or like a restaurant or you know I'm um, got a computer science or not computer science a telecommunications degree here, so I'm pretty good with computers and things like making websites and you know something along those lines. When you were here, a lot was made of the fact of, of your musical background. Of course, people don't know the marching band at Fort Lewis and your interest in music and, and putting together music, creating it. Is that figuring in to your future plans? Yeah, definitely. I mean, but um, I know music is such a hard industry, to, you know, to get into. That's why I use it more as a as a hobby, you know. Um, so, uh, but I definitely play all the time. You know, I definitely would like to use music in the future if I could. But, you know, I'm not putting all my marbles in one basket. You know, I'd like to... Uh, stay a little reasonable and uh, <laughs> and uh, happy in my decisions. You know, your parents were here, obviously, you grew up here. They've since moved to Pittsburgh. If you do come back and open a business, would it be here or is it just gonna be, you know, where the wind blows? Well, hopefully I'll have a business that's a franchise and I'll have one in Pittsburgh <laughs> as well. But uh, but yeah, definitely Denver is my home. Um, every time, every summer I come back here. So uh, all my friends are still here. So Denver is def definitely home for me. I go there and visit them every once in a while when I can, but Denver's home. No question. Hey, great to see you. Good luck. Thank you.